All right, it's time for another math. Easy. So we're trying to discuss further into limits and continuity and look at some examples right here, basically. Uh, the first example I'm going to go over is the limit as x approaches negative 2 of this x cubed plus 2x squared minus 1, all divided by 5 minus 3x. Now, in my early video, I showed that rational functions are continuous, and this is a rational function. Let's write that down. And thus, uh, it's continuous on its domain. You see the video link uh, below on rational functions and why it's continuous. Basically, if it's continuous, then we can just directly substitute inside here. Uh, you can see my video earlier on continuity. But basically, so we just look at what the domain is in this case. It's wherever, uh, just where the bottom is not defined or when it's equal to zero. So basically, this is the domain is all real numbers except x cannot equal to, well, if we just. Uh, Let's just solve for this one. So when when the bottom is is zero, it's you can't have it. So if this is zero, and move it around. You're gonna have x equal to five over three. So take it uh, over to this side, five over three. So basically, x can't equal to five over three. Let's write it down. Since uh, basically it's uh, it's basically defined everywhere except this point, because then you'll have divided by zero. But since negative two is not five over three, we can just directly plug this in. And if we plug it in, we're just going to get now, uh, this can be negative 2 to 3 plus 2 negative 2 squared minus 1, all divided by 5 minus 3 negative 2. Now if we uh, break this down or just calculate it, this one's going to be negative 2 to the cube. This is going to be negative 8 because it's cubed and it's negative. It's going to be negative inside. This is going to be 4. 2 times 4 is going to be 8. So plus 8 minus 1 and then all divided by... Yeah, by 5 minus, well, this is going to be 3 times uh, negative 2. This is going to be, well, this is going to be now, uh, yeah, 3 times negative 2 is equal to 6. So this is negative 6. And this adds up. So then just these cancel. We're going to be left with negative 1 over, so once uh, 5 minus negative 6 is going to be 5 plus 6, so it's 11. So this is our answer. Yeah, so now let's move on to example two right here. Basically say it's where is f of x continuous and we have this function right here. f of x equal to ln x plus 10, uh, yeah, arc 10 of, of x here all divided by x squared minus one here. Now to find out where it's continuous, we have to look at, well, where is this function first defined? Well, we know that since it's divided by x squared minus one, we know that x squared minus 1 is not equal to 0. And if we rearrange this, we're just going to get x squared is not equal to 1. And this is only true when x is not equal to plus or minus 1 right here. So basically, so it's uh, where is it continuous? So we know that it's not defined here. And now if we look at each one separately right here, x squared minus 1, this is itself is continuous everywhere while x squared is continuous we just draw yeah, if we just draw x axis right here so we know that x squared looks something like this and it goes on forever and as you can see it's clearly continuous this is x squared uh, negative one is just a straight line so it doesn't matter so now we'll look at ln x this one uh, see my earlier video on ln x it, it looks something like this so it's gonna go something like this this is ln x and this is continuous in its domain and that's gonna be well basically for x is greater than zero right here so it's only defined for this and it's continuous on that range. And now if we look at uh, arctan, if we look at arctan, if we look at uh, this function here, this is basically tan, tan x here, and it repeats everywhere like this. It looks something like this, except now for arctan, the inverse is just the inverse of it. And if you see my earlier video on it, it looks something like, yeah, I think it looks something like uh, like this. It would just go, go over like this and goes around. And this would be arctan or, or uh, arc tan of x, or that uh, that's also equal to basically tan inverse of x. See my earlier video on uh, arc tan and tan or inverse tan, and then how I get to this. Basically, as you can see, it looks something like like the, this error right here, and it's the domain is basically it's it's continuous everywhere. It, all it is a smooth line across like this, and a curved line uh, basically all the way across, and that's continuous everywhere. So when we go back to this function here, we know that this ln x is greater than zero continuous only, and this is going to be everywhere, and this is everywhere as well, but overall you can't divide by zero, so at plus or minus one. So basically we have to look at where, uh, which case suits the whole function, and that's basically when we have x is greater than zero, and x is not equal to one right here, because the other one is not going to be defined. If this is not defined here, it's not defined for the whole function here, because we can't plug in, let's say, negative five, Etc. because, well, it's not defined here. So now we have this 
or is, and this is basically where the inter where the it's continuous at. So we could just write the interval as from zero. This is open interval meaning it can't equal to zero, and this is going to be from zero to one. So this is again not equal to. It's not a closed. And also one and then uh, to infinity. And these are both open intervals. You see the video link below on open and versus closed intervals. So now the last example I'm going to go over is basically example three. It says find limit as x approaches one of arc sine, and this is going to be uh, one. Uh, square root, I mean 1 minus square root x divided by 1 minus x right here. Now this one, if we apply theorem, uh, the last theorem I did of the composite function, yeah, if I apply the composite function theorem from my, from my earlier video on, on limits, basically, we could t put this limit that's on the outside of this function within this sine function or arc sine function inside it. So this is going to be equal to now arc sine, and then, then we have the limit inside. So we just solve the limit inside of it now. This is 1 of 1 minus square root x, 1 minus x right here. And now uh, to solve this one here, we can't just plug in 1 because 1 minus 1 is 0. What we could do is actually find, uh, in this case here, this 1 minus x, this is going to be a difference of squares. And basically, yeah, we could rewrite 1 over 1 minus x as a difference of squares. Uh, as you see, I typed this because I was tired of writing this. But basically, uh, what, what this means, you see my video link below on, on what it means, but basically 1, 1 minus x, this, could, this is also equal to, well, 1 minus square root of x, times it by 1 plus square root of x. And because if you expand this out, you're going to get this exactly this one right here. So make sure to watch that video link below on difference of squares. Pretty useful. So now when we plug that in, we're going to get, yeah, we get this uh, limit right here. So the top's going to be 1 minus uh, square root of x, and the bottom's going to be 1 minus square root of x, 1 plus square root of x. So right here, and then the, these ones cancel right here. And then we're just going to be left with, yeah, we'll just be left with now 1 divided by, oh, this is going to be inside 1 plus square root of x right here. And we can plug it in. And this one's just going to be now, yeah, arc sine. And this one's going to be 1 divided by 1 plus 1 or 2. And uh, also you can rewrite it as this uh, sine inverse or this negative 1 up top. 1 divided by 2 right now. And now we could solve for this one using our exact trigonometric ratio, so make sure you watch that video link as well in the in the description below. Basically, if we draw a triangle, if this is 1, this is this is going to be 2 for sine, and this is the exact, uh, this is going to be square root 3. This, this angle right here is pi over 6. If you look at my exact trig ratios right here, and this is going to be, well, pi over 3, and this pi over 6 is 30 degrees. And basically, this this is uh, yeah. So sine of uh, pi over six is equal to one over two. So then the inverse is just basically f pi over six is equal to now inverse sine one over two. And basically, our answer is pi over six. So that's all it is. Well, that's uh, all for today. Uh, hopefully, you uh, understood from uh, these examples how to uh, basically just solve limits uh, and you also uh, finding out of whether a limit function is continuous or not. Well, it's all for you to be download these notes in the Dropbox link below and uh, just uh, look at the uh, description below for the vid related video links. Uh, There's pretty useful videos there. That's all for today and stay tuned for another math easy solution.